Good morning. It is so good to be back with you after a few weeks away. But know that when I am away, each memory of you brings delight just as your presence brings joy. In creating lives of meaning, we cannot forget blessing. That simple, peculiar thing that can make any pathway sacred. Today our summer series concludes, but before we carry all that we've mined into a new season and series, we cannot forget blessing. If hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul, blessing is its twin bird whose presence encircles with light, surrounding anyone or anything with sincerest hope for their well-being, wholeness, and joy. Blessings can be pronounced anywhere, with words or without. We'll recognize them when our hearts alight with gratitude or delight or peace, or the sense that we've been seen or heard and known. At my family's Thanksgiving table last year, my sister-in-law said to her son, my four-year-old nephew, Share with Uncle Michael what you say with everyone at school before lunch. My nephew, who at the time attended a Jewish day school, began in perfect Hebrew, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. Blessed are you, Eternal One, Sovereign of the Universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen, we said through very wide smiles as the rolls were passed. I don't know how, but blessings can transform any atmosphere, stir a quality of awe in the air, and inspire a new awareness. That moment we thought was ordinary, that rote conversation or routine, that person we'd always overlooked, Blessing wonders, maybe there's more going on here. Or as the ancients remembered Jacob's words, surely God is in this place, and I did not realize it. To bless is as simple as really seeing something or understanding someone for who they are and pronouncing it good. We may think only professionals can bless. And if the thought of being asked to offer a prayer for a meal is literally your worst nightmare, you might be content with that idea. But blessing is so much broader. It is the work of the collective, shared by everyone in the community. Try it sometime with those sitting around you here in the sanctuary or at home where every Sunday morning your TV stand or desk becomes an altar as you tune into our live stream, or wherever and to whomever your days take you. Our Buddhist friends offer the perfect script open to our own verses that can be said aloud or in the heart. May you be happy. May you be free from suffering. May you know peace. May you be well in body, mind, and spirit. May you have what you need for life. May you be loved. It is a beautiful way to bless ourselves too and then expand our compassion beyond self and home and community and into neighborhoods and encampments, out across the world and its diverse peoples, even those we deem enemies and to the earth itself and all its creatures. The practice brings a clarifying effect, clearing the fog in our own atmosphere, and can change how we perceive and interact with life. Last week, Dr. Harris and Laurel Irene shared the sweetest video of their young daughter, Ara Lee who upon seeing a dead snake in the road on their evening walk, quickly ran to collect a few flowers and then placed them beside the snake. 
To offer a blessing on something, I think, is to perceive that something from a divine perspective. This too was a life. This too is good, lovingly and wonderfully made. This too is holy. And what is liberating about the practice of pronouncing blessings is that our blessing doesn't confer sacredness, but rather attunes our awareness to an inherent sacredness that was there all along. This is why I said blessing is peculiar. Because when we bless, we learn we've already been beaten to it. In the act of blessing, we find a door has already opened to bless us. Today's scripture opens to us such a door, in whose room Jesus is seated at a table with his companions before a meal, perhaps before praying that same Hebrew prayer my nephew prayed. To their surprise, Jesus gets up and wordlessly begins washing feet blessing his closest friends with towel, water, and wash basin. Such an act of hospitality was expected from guests, but not from the host. This story always brings to my mind my time in the occupied West Bank in 2016, in the walled-off city of Bethlehem. Bethlehem, which means house of bread, the city where Jesus was born. We were there to learn about the realities of the conflict and occupation and visited a large Palestinian family whose porch floor was wildly uneven. Slabs of large tile that had been pushed up by underground bombs detonated by the IDF. A terrifying intimidation tactic to scare this family into abandoning its home and becoming refugees. Watch your step, we were told, minding carefully the exposed cavernous holes of dirt beneath the now useless floor. Once seated in the home, one of the sons of this family, maybe eight or nine years old, came around with a tray, offering us these small, simple towels with which to wipe our faces. Following him was his father with another tray filled with tiny little paper cups of the strongest coffee I had ever tasted in my life. Amid unimaginable realities, this family never forgot blessing. May we never forget our own blessing and calls for peace to enjoy the majority of that entire region longing for peace, an end to the horrors, the violence. Do you understand what I have done to you? Jesus asks. You call me teacher and sovereign, and you are right. So if I then, your teacher and sovereign, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Love one another as I have loved you. A blessing is an act of love, and like love, compels us to live and embody the words we speak. Or said another, perhaps more familiar way, we are blessed to be a blessing, to carry the blessing to others, to echo the recovery community. We all, every one of us, is made not with original sin, but with original blessing, inherently good, to whom and through whom love flows every minute of our lives. It is like a river into which we enter and remain, a sacred flow. Yes, throughout our lives we may deny it and fight its current and even throw rocks at others alongside us, but we can never be outside of love. Love is the air we breathe and the waters in which we swim. To love, then, is to join the flow of love through the ages, to live into and embody that goodness at the core of our being, 
And oh, how glad that journey can be. This is Jesus' way. When we bless, we love. We bless others with time, consideration, presence, and authentic solidarity. We bless others with patient listening, listening to understand, and a place where others feel safe. We bless others by accompanying, showing up, and offering the wisdom of our experience. We bless others with encouragement, kindness, providing some need in a moment of distress or grief. When we bless, we love. When we bless, hate no longer finds safe harbor within us. When we bless, we become curious about all we don't know about another's circumstances or struggles. When we bless, even bigotry is diffused. We soften and reconsider life and reimagine how we will interact with it. When we bless, we affirm the dignity of neighbors and strangers and those who differ from us. And when we bless even the chasms between us, we find we no longer have time to build walls. When we bless and bear witness to the image of God in someone, some people, some voting block, some refugee camp, some parts of the world we'd rather ignore, we cannot help being moved by their suffering, moved by mercy to protect and demand an end to the causes of that misery. When we bless, we love. In creating lives of meaning, we cannot forget blessing, that simple, peculiar thing that can make any pathway sacred. Wrote Howard Thurman, to accept all experience as the raw material out of which the human spirit discerns meaning and values. This is the mark of spiritual maturity to awaken to the sacred everywhere, to practice paying attention, to live and be at home in our bodies, to dream, to discover something new while getting lost, and consider how we encounter others, and practice partnership, and engage our collective will, and live with purpose, and continue creating a feast where all are welcome. Feeling and working from within our pain, There is meaning to be mined in all of it, even in a piece of paper. Anita Reiner, a dear member of our community and my book group, is is gifted in the Japanese art of origami, which imagines what might yet be or become of a single piece of paper. A star to light our pathways. A butterfly to remind us of the intellect and innocence of the creatures who only ask that we share our common home respectfully so that they might live too. Or this globe of elegant beauty whose intricate folds and complexities astound and remind us how many disparate pieces can be as one. Some time ago, Anita shared with me hundreds of beautiful origami models from her work that were designed by artists all over the world. And she said, share them however the church chooses to share them. So today, we offer Anita's amazing art to you not only as a blessing to close this series, but as a reminder of it and all that has yet to become of our lives and the life of this community and world we are co-creating with God and shaping into being. At coffee hour today, we invite you to peruse this origami and choose one that speaks to you. We may display it at home or in the office or on our dashboard that it might remind us that there is in the end no pathway that is not sacred, and no part of our lives without meaning, or at least with something to teach. We may also choose another today 
to share with someone else. Anita, thank you for this tremendous blessing. Beloved community, may you never forget the blessing that is each of you and all the ways you teach us how to love. May we never forget the blessing that is all of us together across miles and states, across continents and even hemispheres, a movement whose ultimate meaning is love. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> Indeed. Amen.